Hey everybody, welcome back. It's MJ here, just plain fun. So you're here wondering which irons, cutters, blades are unique to the Stanley number 55, and then which ones are can be used on the 55 or the 45. Well, you have come to the right place because by the end of this video, you're gonna have a quick and easy way to figure out which ones are best suited to only be used with the number 55. Let me go ahead and show you the rundown of which ones are unique to the number 55 or which ones are best suited to be used with the number 55. It's mostly what's in box number one on the older style of 55s. Now what they did is they moved some of these irons into other boxes on the later versions, but in this particular version, it's mostly box number one. Here's an example. And the main thing you're looking for here is when it's a mismatch. So if it's an OG style like this, where one side is significantly higher than the other, that's where you need the capability of the 55 in order to get the job done. A couple of other examples would be the chamfer. So your 40 and 41 there, same thing, one side significantly lower than the other. So you're gonna need the capability of the 55. And then a couple of specific irons that are not in box one, even on the early ones, are gonna be these 73 and 75. But as you can see, the common theme here is when it's not an even from left to right. So there's a significant drop. And as far as what that looks like in practice, you know, here's a number 55. And just for clarity here, I'm gonna go ahead and pop the, the um, fence off there so that you can see it better. So you've got your center skate right here. You've got your main body and the main capability and what sets the number 55 apart from the number 45 is the fact that you can move the center skate up and down like so. So if I had an iron, like if I was using a reading cutter or something, or a plow iron, whatever, where it's straight across, of course I'm going to move my skate, and I'm going to have my skate be at the same depth as my main body. But if I have a cutter like this one, the one that's in here, number 112, then I'm going to have to move my skate down so that I'm providing full support for both sides of that iron, like so. And that is as opposed to the number 45, where the main body and the skate are straight, you know, they're in line with each other and the skate is fixed. So it does not move up and down. And as a side note, this is not terribly different from their wooden predecessors. So you don't have a, a really pronounced rise from one side to the other, but it is there. And the whole idea is you've got this support behind the iron so as the worker is pushing it through in order to get to the depth in order to get the molding design that they're after you've got support behind the blade going all the way across and of course as you likely know the purpose of the combination plane is to replace multiple wooden planes replace multiple molding planes so that you just have as they're advertised seven planes in one but y'all already knew that and while we're on the topic of combination planes, just in general, I'll go over a couple of the other specific irons. So this right here is an example of one of the fluting irons. This is number 34. And what the book says for the fluting irons is you actually don't use the skate. You use just the main body. And this is what it shows in the book, is you just center the main body behind that iron, and that's going to provide the support that you need on that one, especially on probably the three smallest ones. You might run into difficulty on the largest of them, but you know, by all means, if that's something that you do or have done, you know, your, your comments and your experiences are always welcome. Another popular style of iron that gets used a, a bit or to be your hollows and rounds. This would be an example of one right here. And what the book shows on these is you support one side of the iron with your main body, and then you center your skate, which this one's a little off, but you center your skate on the center of the rest of it. And that's what it shows for the 55, specifically for the hollows and rounds. But I would contend that if you were doing a lot of hollow and round work, your best bet would be to go ahead and invest in the nosing attachment, which you can use with the number 45. This is actually what it's designed for. and you're essentially having a special attachment specifically for using with your hollows and rounds. And this one's, this one, you know, it's pretty solid. It's pretty good stuff. And hey folks, that's a wrap. 
quick, easy, and to the point. You know, just to recap real quick, if your iron goes straight across, if it's a if crossed, if it's a plowing iron, if it's a reading iron, if it's anything where the left and right sides of the iron are the same distance or the same length, they go straight across, then you can use it on the 45 or the 55. If you have an iron that has one side significantly lower than the other, which are mostly contained in box one, with a few exceptions on the earlier versions, and then they get moved around a bit in the later versions, then those are going to be best used on the number 55. You might be able to get by with them on the 45 if you're careful and you're taking shallow cuts and all that, but best suited for the 55. So as always, questions are welcome, whether it's here on YouTube, questions, comments, your experiences, all that is welcome here on YouTube, or join me over on Facebook, Just Plain Fun, the parts division, and I look forward to seeing you all out there. Thanks, thanks for watching.